Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know what? Let's just let's let's just talk about this wedding for a minute. Let's talk about this train wreck. This very dreary wedding scene. Because this whole scene was dreary from start to finish. And I mean just like ugh. This is coming from a person who's watched every single episode of This Is Us. And I can tell you right now that this was just dreary and sad and all the worst ways possible. And if you think it wasn't enough, they decided to bring Violet there. They decided to bring a child into this dreary ass scene. And I'm... I just finished watching it, and I'm still just like, are you kidding me? What is she, like, eight, seven? I, I can't even begin to sit there and be like, why would you bring her there to see her sick, dying uncle that looks like he's on death's door? <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to make sense, but, um, may as well, may as well. Years ago, when I was working at a bookstore, a customer came in and she told me that she went to take her son to go see Frankenweiner. Because she was like, oh, it looks like a cute Disney movie and whatever. So she took him, she took him there, and then she was there telling me, that it was kind of, it was, it was somewhat of a mistake. Because then she had to sit there and talk to her child about death. And she didn't think she would have to because she didn't know what kind of movie she was going to bring her son into. Again, I don't know what this has to do with this episode. But, I, I mean, I don't know if he's ready to have that conversation with his child, and it just was like, oh God. Uh. So, Willow is still going through his marriage. You got Michael there, and the guilt is just piling on for both of them. Now, halfway through this wedding scene, when they're exchanging their vows, I felt bad for Michael. I felt bad for Michael. Because when you look at it as a whole, they couldn't have came in there, even when he was in the hospital and he was like, whatever, and he was feeling sort of better, they couldn't even come in there and be like, hey, listen, just let you know, yeah, what you and, what you and her had is over, and um, it's probably been over for a while, so um, yeah, she's not with you anymore, she's with me. They couldn't have done that, okay? They had to sit there and play along, and Michael had to go along with it. He did. And watching them exchange vows, watching the look on his face, I couldn't but help but sit there and be like, damn, bro. <laughs> I genuinely feel bad for you. You know, there was one point where he dropped the ring, and, um, you know, Michael had to pick it up, and he was like, you know, could you put the ring, ring on your finger? And he does that. And I'm just like, mm, man, it's like it's like a punch to the gut, and you're just like, Jesus Christ, I I felt that. Not to mention when Michael and Chase were um, talking, and you know Chase is like, you know, you're a really good friend, you're a really good man, and you know I'm just so sorry that I did this, and you can just see all the guilt just piling on. I think he actually looked like he was about to start tearing up at one point. Hell, actually, I felt like I was tearing up at one point. Because it was just so, so bad. Like, and he just had to suck it up. He had to suck it up. He just had to sit there. You know what? What the hell am I doing since I got this? Good stuff. Um, he had to sit there and just deal with it. 
you know, and, and that, that just sucked, um, you know, Violet being there, being all cute and stuff like that, throwing the flowers and hugging him, and him just sitting there crying, and I'm just like, how long are we going to go through this scene for? I, I, it just was so painful to sit there and watch. They exchanged vows, you know, they were now his husband and wife, they kiss. Michael looked like he just, uh, Michael looked like he was in a hell of a lot of pain. And when it was over, you know, he's sitting up there on his, well, he's sitting up there in the hospital, like, lying down in the bed. You got his mom, you got Chase, you got mom, you got Willow there, and, you know, they're talking for a little bit, and then he just crashes. Now, you got Gregory, and you got, um, then you got, um, Gregory, you got Liz, and you got, um, Chase. You know, Greg, Liz, Greg! Liz and Finn. Wow. Um, Finn gets a call from the ho um, from another lab from the lab. Snit this saying that the test results are in. He checked the test results, and yes, Gregory was the father. It was um, it was Cyrus being spiteful, you know. So, but with that being said, you know, at one point Gregory was like, "Listen, why don't you just..." You know, give it to him now. But the last time he was like, yo, we made things worse before. I can't do that again. But now they're sitting there, you know, he finds out he's the father. They're all smiling and everything like that. I'm just like, so, um, I, I get you guys are happy and you know, it's a great occasion and, you know, yay. But, uh, you know your son is dying. Your, your brother over there is dying, right? You might want to, might want to kind of. <laughs> you know, save him first, and then we could just, you know, do all that happy stuff after. What's, why don't we do that first? But yeah, I'm sitting there watching it, and Chase crashes. Like, there's one point, it's like, it's dreary scene, dreary scene. Then you just hear that, that sound. That sound that, heaven forbid, you never want to hear. And then, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of like, it didn't wake me up. It just kind of got me out that moment. Like, oh, man, this dude's actually dying. Like, yo, y'all should... Y'all should do something. So I guess we'll find out what happens. Now, Carly, Jason, and Brick. Pretty much the shipment was bad. Well, pretty much what wound up happening was that they caught the driver that apparently stole from them. Um, and when they questioned him, he was like, you know, somebody was just saying, well, you know, the, the organization is weak. And, you know, they don't really have a leadership or anything like that. So, you know, we could just kind of do whatever we want. The reason for that is because Carly's in charge. Now, you know, I'm not going to lie. At first, she was like, oh, is it because I'm a woman? I was like, Carly, just stop. Just stop. Because that was just so wrong in general. Considering that she went to the five families meeting, last time I checked, there was a woman at that, at that seat. But they were just like, no, it's because, you know, at the end of the day, it has to be Jason. He has the experience. And he says something along the lines of, you know, Jason's going to have to sit there and push you out. Um, otherwise, the organization's going to look weak, and they're going to sit there and challenge them. So, Brick left, and, you know, Carly was like, you know, what are we going to do, you know? I'm just not there thinking, um... You are still going to, like, give up control, right? Like, I, I get it. The power is fine. And, you you know, like, my theory was that you're closer to Sunny. But, uh, you know, they ain't having it. So, what, what, what are you going to do? Because we'll just wait and find out. It is always good to see Stephen A. Smith, though. So, that's always fun to watch. Um, now, let's start off. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about this, um, Maxi and Sam part. Because... Maxie's whole plan is just falling apart. Just little by little. Little by little. Just just, just falling apart. First of all, Maxie calls up Brooklyn. And Maxie's like, oh, I want to see my child. Like, I just, I, I got to see my child. And Brooklyn's like, have you lost your damn mind? What the hell is wrong with you? Yo, to the outside world, we ain't friends, okay? We want no parts of each other. How's that going to look? You coming over here. On top of that, you know, your baby being gone. That's not going to seem strange. Also, Peter is still out there lurking. 
You know, just waiting for you to sit there and slip off. So after some convincing, she's like, yeah, okay, that's, that's, you're right. And then Sam comes over and Sam's like, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, uh, a lot of this is not making any sense. So how about we just talk about this, you know, you, let me do the story again. Just, just one more time for clarity. At some point, Maxie gets kind of defensive. She's like, well, why are you making me relive this? I'm like, Maxie, why don't you just tell Sam the damn truth? What are we doing? This whole scene is just, uh This whole scene is just kind of dumb. It's just kind of dumb because it's like, you know, Sam is supposed to be your friend. Have you back and everything like that. You've known each other for like a while. Why wouldn't you just put her on a plan? Instead, you're going to sit there and lie to her. You're going to sit there and waste the cop's time. And, and I understand, I understand about that, but like, why don't you sit there and at least keep her in the loop? You know, have somebody else sit there and help you with this lie because you clearly are starting to fall apart. Um, and of course, towards the end, you know, Max is like, you know, do you believe me? You have to believe me. And Sam's like, I believe you. I'm like, Sam, do you really actually believe her? Or are you just saying that to placate her? Because you're supposed to be this con artist and stuff like that. You're going to sit there and tell him you can't spot a lie? Like, you can't spot when this, when she's lying to you? Come on, it, it's just... <sighs> Let's talk about this Dante and Austin scene because um, at some point Austin, you know, offers to help and stuff like that. And, you know, at first Dante's like, oh, well, you know, a lot of serial killers, you know, they like to sit there and say they're going to help so that way they can taunt us. I'm like, bro, can we just like get this whole thing started? So Austin, I guess, points out a flaw in the map that they have. And so Dante's like, why did this just jump like so, Dante goes, I mean, Austin goes to Dante to start, you know, looking in the woods and stuff like that. Now, at one point, they're walking, and Austin pushes Dante, and I'm like, uh, oh, oh. I was like, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? Was your plan to kill him or something? But he was all like, oh, no, I want to make sure you didn't step on, like, you know, like a broken wood or, you know, a booby trap or something like that. Are you Okay. I don't know, Austin, what if he's not okay? What if he broke his arm or his pinky or something like that? And, you know, and honestly, tell you the truth, Dante was like, yo, you couldn't just warn me. You couldn't, you couldn't just sit there and say, hey, don't do that. And Austin was like, well, you might not have believed me. Okay. All right, because that made no sense whatsoever. I felt like he just wanted to do it to get some sort of satisfaction because... You know, Dante was really sneaky to giving him the right act. Even after he looked through the footage and everything like that, he still sneaky to talking about, well, you know, a lot of serial killers want to sit there and like, come on, bro. Seriously? We, we still doing that? I get it, he's a person of interest, but like, so I felt like maybe that was a little bit of payback. Anyway, they find a hole and Dante, well, at first, Austin was going to go through, but Dante decides to go through and he finds the nurse. So, uh, Maxie, what, what are you going to do now? What's, what's, part of your, what's part of your master plan now that they found the nurse? Because at one point, Maxie was sitting there talking to Sam. And Sam was like, you know, maybe Peter has the baby. And Maxie was like, no, 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 no. We got to look for the nurse. Sam was like, what the hell? What are you talking about? So now, there's not a nurse anymore because, you know, she's all, like, dead and everything. So, um... What's your plan now? I still feel like this part of the story is just broken and you can just you just see the cracks in it. You can just really see the damn cracks in it. So yeah. And it was there for a little bit, but to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, I felt like she didn't really serve pretty much any purpose whatsoever. Um I mean at least Sasha was there to be like the maid of honor. Like she was just kinda there. Like she came to Valentine's place. Talking about trying to find the pilots, I mean the pilots, that way they could sit there and find Peter. Okay, cool. And then she goes to Finn and gets Violet. And, like, like Finn couldn't just got, like, the nanny or something like that to go get Violet. She, he had to sit there and call, like, Anna, like, oh, could you do me a favor? That was the big favor? <sighs> okay, whatever, fine. Let's just find a way for Anna to be somewhat useful, I guess. 
Um, so yeah, she was there during this whole dreadful ass wedding. I mean, it is what it is. It just was just so damn painful to watch. Like, oh, and Valentine was there to sit there and comfort um, Brooklyn because you know she's so upset about Chase and um, she was upset about Chase and everything like that. And you know he was just there to sit there and comfort her. At one point, you know, Brooklyn just threw in a cheap shot that just came out of nowhere and she apologized after that. And, you know, Valentina's like, no, listen, we could just sit there and be friends. You know, we're raising a daughter and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And this whole time, I'm just like, man, when he finds out that this chick was lying to him the whole time, regardless of the reasons, okay, regardless of the reasons, he's going to be in a mix of emotions between... Mad and sad. And, uh... Man, I do not envy that. I don't know why, but I feel like that was pretty much about it. I don't think I really missed anything else, but if I did, write it down in the comment section below. But, before we go, I do want to sit there and talk about, um... This article I was reading on ABC Digest. Um, about Maurice Bernard defending the Nixon fall story. And <laughs> I was reading it, and I was going in the comment section, and I, you know, everyone was thinking to somebody, it sucks, it sucks, it's terrible, it sucks, this, that, and the third. Of course, it was that one person who was like, oh, I love it, it was so great, and I was just like, I am so not going to touch that. Here's the thing about this whole Nixon fall story. The majority of the fan base does not like it. If you had to sit there and do a worldwide poll, I would sit there and say maybe 8% people actually like it. You know, there was one person who was like, I'm so tired of sending in a mob. I'm like, bro, shut up. Uh, listen, I get it. I do. I get it. You know, it's nice to sit there and change things up. And it's always very good to have an opinion. And I was so trying not to go hard on that person. But the point is... A lot of people do not like the story, okay? It is a known fact that the majority of the fan base does not like the story. Having Maurice Bernard sit there and, and, you know, chime in about why it's such a good story is like, bro, listen, I, I, I love you as a person. I think you're uh, an amazing, like, just guy in general, and I think you're a great actor, but, like, you're not going to sit there and try to defend the story to me, okay? That's like trying to sit there and defend Pooh. Okay? You can't sit there and try to defend Pooh to me. I don't care. It ain't working. Okay? So I just find it very funny that he tries to chime in on this storyline that he wants to sit there and push for so long. Like, oh, it's a great storyline because of blah, 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 blah. I was like, bro. No, it's not. Don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. There were some times in there that I did enjoy. Okay? I'm not going to sit there and lie and sit there and say I didn't enjoy all of the stuff of Nixon Falls, okay? Um, but it was one of those detours that even even if you enjoyed it a little bit, it lasted way too long. And another thing that people were listening there, well, talking about was the whole Nina and Mike getting along and becoming closer. And of course, you had the majority of people listening there saying, yuck, or pretty much everything else in the comment section. Of course, you always have that one person that want to be like, oh, I love the storyline between, you know, Nina and, and Sonny. I want them to get closer. They're so cute together. And you have everyone else looking at them like, why, 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 why are you even say that for? Like, why, why are you in the damn comment section for? But the point is, I mean, listen, the majority of the fan base doesn't like it, okay? But it just seems that ABC, along with Maurice Bernard, is just like, we're going to do... Whatever we want to do, because this is what we want to do, and you're going to enjoy it and like it regardless, because, well, we say so, and it's just whatever. Um, and this brings me back to the point that I've never made, but I'm going to sit there and say it now, about why I miss the other soap operas so much, why I miss One Like to Live, why I miss All My Children, and I didn't even watch that show, but why I miss One Like to Live, and why I miss Poor Charles, and... As the world turns and passions, you know, like I miss all that stuff. Um, because I always felt like whenever you had a lot of soap operas, 
you had a good sense of competition. Okay? You, you just... You couldn't sit there and, do, and it's not sit there and say you can't sit there and make, you know, do risks and stuff like that. But when the fans are like, yo, listen, this ain't working. Like, you got to sit there and course correct. Otherwise, we're just going to fast forward. We're not going to watch it or whatever. They genuinely did listen. Because, hell, if this wasn't going good, it's like, yo, I can sit there and watch um, All My Children. You know, I can sit there and watch um, Won't Like to Love. You know? I mean, hell, people were so mad that they, there was somebody in the comment section that was like, yo, can we just bring back Shiloh? Like, do something at this point because this is not working. Maurice? Alright, you're my guy. We got the same name. But, uh, <laughs> this isn't working, bro. This isn't working. We all know this isn't working. And I'm pretty sure that if we had the other soap operas, that they would have course corrected on this a long time ago. Um... So I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I, I kind of want to share that story because I was just like, when I read that this morning, and I was just like, oh, really? So, so he's defending this? I mean, of course he is. He's pioneering this whole thing. So I'm just like, at the same time, it's like, really, bro? Really? So we just, we just going to pick this time, just decide, oh, I heard what the fans have to say, but, uh. Yeah, I still want to sit there and do this Nixon story, this Nixon Fall story. So, um, buckle up, guys, or not, because I'm going to do it anyway. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, listen, I... What the hell am I doing? I like a good shake-up every now and then. And if you do it in the right way, it's great. And when you do it in a way that just comes off kind of like poo, um, we have a problem. And it's more of a problem than the fact that they're just not listening to the fans. And they're doing what they want to do. Um, anyway, I don't think there's really much of anything else to sit down and talk about. Oh, uh, so tomorrow it's gonna be a double date. Um, gonna sit down and introduce her to my friend's last family, and um. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So, and with that being said, I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone for just listening. And not just to the general, you know, not just to the soap opera stuff, but just, you know, just like personal stuff, you know, like even when I talk about my dates and stuff like that and, you know, how excited I am about um, my double date tomorrow with like my friends and stuff like that, you know. And just hearing and reading the supportive comments, it's just like, I am, I am in awe each and every single time that I read the comment section and stuff like that. And, you know, not even just talking about the soap opera stuff, but just in general. So I want to sit there and thank everyone for just, you know, rocking with me and, you know, going through, um, you know, all these good and bad episodes, you know, just, just for watching, like, my, my videos and stuff like that. I want to thank everyone, so... With that being said, I'm going to go. Um, thank you for listening to me rant because, <laughs> let's be honest, the uh, review was over 16 minutes ago. But thank you for watching. Be safe. Be real safe because, uh, listen, I don't want to sit there and, you know, have people in par you know, be paranoid or anything like that. But definitely keep your head on a swivel because, once again, it is the wild, wild West and people are doing whatever the hell they want. It's almost as though they feel like there's no consequences to their actions. So um, just be like careful and extra careful. And, um, you know, have a good day, good night, be safe. See you in the next video.